It's now time to review what is regarded as one of the best animated movies of all time, and one of the best DreamWorks movies of all time. Get ready for The Prince of Egypt. Hello my fellow YouTubers and subscribers and welcome to my latest movie review where today I review the 1998 animated movie from DreamWorks, The Prince of Egypt, directed by three directors, <laughs> Brenda Chapman, Steve Hickner and Simon Wells. Of course the movie was released in 1998 and stars a A-list cast, you know, Val Kilmer, Ray Fiennes, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, Sandra Bullock, Jeff Goldblum, and uh, Steve Martin, uh, Martin Short, and, and, and Patrick Stewart. So there's loads of people in this movie who you recognize the voice talents from. And this movie is an adaptation of the Exodus book from the Bible. So if you are religious, you will probably have some knowledge about what the film is about. I did study religion when I was in school, uh, and I did go to church when I was younger. But that's not what this video is about. This video is a review of the movie, and the review <laughs> has been requested by a few people for quite some number of years, and it's just taken me a while to actually get to reviewing it, so sorry about that. Egyptian Prince Moses learns of his identity as a Hebrew and his destiny to become the chosen one to deliver his people to freedom. So, The Prince of Egypt. Well, this movie has been getting a lot of hype over the many years. I did see this movie years ago when I was a kid, but I didn't fully really understand what it was about because I was too young to really recognize the religious significance of what the movie was trying to do and obviously I was when I was studying it I watched it and I kind of got a bit of a clear understanding but I'd not seen this film in years this is the first time I've seen this movie in at least 10 years so it's been a long old time since seeing this film my opinion of this film now is wow <laughs> quite simply wow this film is phenomenal this movie is one of the greatest animated films of all time this movie is beautiful, powerful, just epic in every sense of the word. It is a biblical masterpiece you know, put on film. I mean, you know, whether you agree with some of the artistic license taken in the film or not, the filmmaking is just beautiful. Um, faultless? Nearly very faultless. There's only like one or two things I could complain about. But other than that, this, wow, it's, it's beautiful. There is so much artistry with this film. It is unreal. And the emotion of the story, the dark themes as well. There's a lot of evocative dark scenes in this film, which are really, really actually quite mature for, for an animation. You know, it just proves that animation is not just for kids. I think, first of all, let's talk about the animation because that's obviously the, the first thing that pe most people talk about. The animation is stunning. It is absolutely superb. And some of the imagery shown on screen is so, so good. I mean, certainly towards the end, you kind of think, well, is this really, did this really happen, you know, in the Bible? Like, is this really true? But I'm not going to go on and debate about whether the Bible is true or not, you know, and all of that. That's not what this video is about. But the animation, the way it kind of, um, it showed all these things uh, is it, amazing. Like when, when Moses turns the sea red into blood, when the water rises up at the end and all the villagers go through the pathway and are led to the promised land, you know, that's all fantastic. And also there's some very dark scenes as well, like when the plague happens and when uh, Moses kills a man and also when the people are dying from all of the terror that's being inflicted because Ramesses won't let them go. There are some bold decisions made in this movie and I have to, you know, say I, I was with it all the way. I, I thought, wow, this, uh, <laughs> yeah. This film is powerful. It's It was very powerful. And I think that this is one of the few DreamWorks movies I would actually not recommend for kids. I think, unless you're really religious, of course, and you have a deeper understanding of the story. But I don't think this is a film that's made for people who are very, very young. I think it's quite mature in some of the things it does. Especially towards the um, end of the film, where Ramesses actually, spoiler alert, loses his son. You know, and it's a very dramatic piece of the story because... We discover, of course, that um, Ramesses' father, Seti, um, was the reason that Moses was sent away because, because you know, he was killing babies, you know, and using the people as slaves, which was horrible. 
and then Moses, when he discovers the truth, um, very cleverly done on film with the way they, they display the backstory through the mural on the wall. I mean, we do see some of it in the opening song as well. But then when we see Ramesses and Moses talking to each other, when Ram Moses is trying to confront his, his, well, his adopted brother and say to him, look, you need to stop this now. This is wrong on a number of levels. It's morally wrong. And we see him standing in front of the mural and taking the same image as his father, like pointing his fingers the other, in the other direction, saying, I will never let your people go. And he's going to do exactly the same as what his father was doing, which is horrible. And then he pays the price for that by losing his own son, which I actually totally forgot about that scene. That was a real shock to see that again. And uh, it was dramatic. And then that's what finally convinces Ramesses to let let them go. Uh, he would never have lost his son if he if he had just let them go to begin with. But that's the story. You know, he, he needed to realize that um, him and his father were morally wrong for what they were doing. And Moses realized it when he met his brother, his real brother and sister. And I really like the journey of Moses. I think uh, it's it's very well displayed. He's uh, he's a bit of a you know a bit of a reckless kid at the beginning. You know he's having fun with Ramesses and then getting into trouble, and then he discovers the truth about his uh, <laughs> his heritage and then realizes his whole life is a lie. And of course we see that shocking scene where um, he tries to stop. Um, the guard from whipping the slaves and then he accidentally kills the guard and then flees into exile very dramatic scene very powerful stuff and this movie <laughs> it's so emotional there's a lot of scenes that you go oh wow like you you feel it it's a really dark movie in a lot of places and actually this movie did win an oscar for best original song for when you believe so hey ho it's an oscar winner and the music, oh my god, not only is Hans Zimmer's score incredibly powerful, the songs, the songs work really, really well. They are really beautifully embedded into this film. We have the opening song, which is arguably my favourite, actually, Deliver Us. That's amazing. Uh, and the way they just show that flashback when Moses, as a baby, is sent away. Uh, that's very that's very powerful. Uh, All I Ever Wanted, also very lovely. That's a really great one. The Queen's song is good. Through Heaven's Eyes is a great fun one. Playing with the big boys is also quite fun with the two comedy characters, with uh, played by Martin Short and uh, Steve Martin. The Plagues, um, which is when he's saying, you know, let my people go. You know, that's again very dark, very powerful. Of course, the classic one, When You Believe, as well, which is used in the credits, or a pop version is used in the credits, uh, which is performed by Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey. I mean, When You Believe, uh, you'd think, it, it is a little cheesy, like the pop version of it is a little cheesy, but in the movie, it does work really well with the ensemble singer, and it's a very powerful song because it's full of hope, and, and you know, when they rejoice, the fact that they are free, you know, it's a... It's a great song to have towards the end. It definitely is. And also the cast. Like, I mean, the cast is weird because if this was a live action version of the of the story, they would not look right for their parts whatsoever. <laughs> but, you know, they are actually pretty good, to be fair, uh, in, as their roles. But I'll just go over a few of them. So Val Kilmer voices Moses, but he also voices God as well, which is interesting. And, I mean, he puts on a different kind of sound to the voice, and I think they edit the voice for God slightly. When Moses has the encounter for God, and he says, you know, I'm choosing you to, with this staff, you're going to, you have control of all of my wonders, and you'll be able to lead the people to freedom, which is great. And, you know, I like the fact that Moses, you know, discovers that he is worthy of honor. He doesn't, you know, he learns some humility along his journey, and he learns that, you know he needs to do what's right and he's a good man and at the very end of the film is him carrying the ten commandments up to the mountain which is which is perfect that's a great way to end it because it really shows his journey has come round full circle and Val Kilmer actually does suit the role surprisingly he is good and he definitely brings a lot of emotion to the role Ray Fiennes plays Ramesses again a, a slightly bizarre choice when you think about it but for the film it works uh, because it's animated as well it works and I like the emotion that he brings to the, the film as well. And the relationship the two of them have as brothers or adopted brothers is is definitely comes through in the in the vocal performances. And to see Ramesses, Ramesses' descent into darkness is horrible. It is actually tragic when he loses his son. I, I actually was very sad to see that happen. But again, that's the whole story. He, he didn't realize what he was doing until it was too late. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer as Zipporah. Now, it, this character to me is quite weak. Not Michelle Pfeiffer. She's great in the role. But 
I just find the fact that I just find the character to be kind of underutilized. That she doesn't really get much to do. She gets introduced as a prisoner, and then Moses lets her go. And then when he's exiled, he meets her again. They fall in love, get married, and that's kind of it. And then she joins him on the journey, and she's kind of left in the background for the rest of the film. So if there's, if there's any criticism, for me, it's her. I would have very much liked her to do more in the film, but it doesn't really bother me that much. Other than that, the film is pretty much flawless. Sandra Bullock is great as Miriam. Um, she's a very sweet character, and I, I, I love her scenes with um, Moses and Aaron, you know, um, they're, they're a great, you know, group of characters, and you really be believe the emotion behind the, uh, the the performance. Jeff Goldblum as Aaron. Uh, interesting choice. Again, Jeff Goldblum, who kind of, oh, uh, yeah, or uh, Jeff Goldblum, uh, he just kind of, he does his usual kind of stuttering, performing thing, you know. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum kind of plays every role in a very similar way. But I did like his performance as Aaron. But he's, he's not one of my favourites in the cast. Slightly odd casting choice, but... You know, there's still enough there for me to go, it works, but I could have seen someone else do the role. But okay, nice, it's, it's a different sort of role for him to play, so I quite I quite like the kind of weaseliness of the of the character. Like, he's not, he's not someone who has a lot of power, and when he tries to confront Moses, you know, he's like, oh, where are you? And, uh, you know, <laughs> it kind of is a little, uh, it's, it's a little... Um, pathetic in a way, but I suppose because he's a, he's a villager and he's a slave, he doesn't really have a lot of courage until Moses kind of helps him believe that they can actually um, get out of this situation. Uh, Danny Glover is Jethro, very small part, but he's um, Zipporah's father. Uh, he sings a very good song uh, called Heaven's Eyes. He's, he's, quite, he's quite a jolly, lovable character. Patrick Stewart as Seti, very good. Helen Mirren as the Queen. I didn't realise it was Helen Mirren as the Queen. They've really got an A-list cast for this movie. And Steve Martin and Martin Short as Hotep and Hoy, the, the two high priests who are the comedy characters. I mean, they're not the most interesting people, but they do sing a pretty good song called uh, you're, you're Playing With The Big Boys Now. So they do manage to utilise them in the best way possible and give the film the light relief that it needs. And for the film's runtime, it's only 98 minutes and it flies by but it's epic the way it's designed and and you know visually put together and and orchestrally put together with the music <laughs> and it's just beautifully told the story is absolutely beautiful and the actors do a fantastic job considering they're all a-list stars um and it is an animated film so yeah i i, I can't fault it really I've, other than the fact that zippor is an underused character i can't fault it so the prince of egypt wow this is a superb movie and this might quite possibly could be my favorite DreamWorks movie of all time or one of my favorites definitely um it's definitely high up there I mean come on it's wow it, it just blew me away so how can I not give the Prince of Egypt a 10 out of 10 <laughs> This is a wonderful film, and again, whether you can deal with the artistic license from the Bible or not, that's up to you. To me, it doesn't bother me too much because I, I like the storytelling of the film, and I think that the, the presentation of the movie is beautiful, so what can I say? So thank you very much for watching this review. What do you think of The Prince of Egypt? Please comment down below, let me know. Please hit the like and subscribe button for more content like this, and stay tuned next time for more reviews. So until next time, thank you very much all for watching, and as always, I'm Mr. Thomas 11 See ya. Bye for now.